Okay, uh, what we're trying to do today is uh, get introduced to BioPython. Okay, it's the next uh, logical uh, progression from the three classes or so where we introduced ourselves to Python. And uh, the point of that was we can try and do many things in Python, some basic things. Um, as far as you know, anything a little harder, I hope that uh, you have a little bit of experience now through the homework of at least being able to explore and tackle something that uh, you would typically not be able to do before. One of the other things that you can do is, if you feel the need to know anything, at least now you can at least begin the possibility of finding out how to do something, okay? Look it up, for example. Um, I'm assuming after the little um, issues we had in the class before last, about 10 days or so from now, where we could not uh, install BioPython, um, I hope everybody now can um, install BioPython. Uh, one of the things that you can consider doing is, uh, for example, go directly to uh, the Python entry and if you say import bio like so and the fact that it doesn't complain tells you that uh, you would actually have bio Python installed okay so what we'll do is uh, we will now go on and look at um, so I've got about 20 codes here um, on various facets on the introduction to BioPython. And what we'll do is uh, these are uh, these 20 codes and uh, you know you have a fast Q file, you have a fast A file and something called as a GBK, which is a GenBank file. Uh, you have all those files with you right now and one of the things that you would do is you would be able to um, use those, okay? So as you're following this uh, short presentation, uh, what you might consider doing is uh, when I'll announce the file name and this way you can open it, look at it as I demonstrate it, you know, uh, execute it and see what the output looks like and all of which um, you'll be able to see. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's see, for example, let me open the first file. I'm editing it with idle as, as usual and um, I'll expand this a little bit and what what you'll see here is uh, in this particular code that you're importing bio now you'll realize that um, and this is taken directly from the bio Python tutorial there's a PDF file and you can download it and follow just this and I think this is a uh, this is a good start um, and we're mostly going to look at uh, sequence related stuff uh, today Okay, um, now this um, uh, import bio and from bio.sequence import sequence. So uh, as we look at this, you kind of, it's a little annoying because, you know, it says that for every little thing, it's not just a question of, um, it's not just a question of uh, being able to look at, um, um, uh, you know how to write a BioPython kind of script invoking the BioPython model, but you'll realize that uh, you know you have to remember what um, all the modules that are actually there. So, so from that standpoint, it's a little annoying because you say, "Oh, look, I actually have um, uh, you know I have to remember to import sequence." Uh, this print bio version was just something uh, which is it's it's kind of completely immaterial to um, the point of what we are looking at here. Uh, it's completely immaterial. It was just something. Um, it was some of the instructions that I had to look at when I was trying to and having difficulty um, installing BioPython. But it just tells you the BioPython version. Uh, you could completely comment this line out and it's not going to make a difference. Um, one of the things that we are looking at here, for example, is 
my sequence and again it's just you're writing a sequence and you're calling it sequence um, a c t a c t g g t um you'll realize that as you begin to define um some of this you're going to have to actually import um, something called alphabet and you're going to have to specify it as a dna sequence um, or an uh, a protein sequence and this way biopython knows to do with it remember biopython at its base is python okay and it's not supposed to know that this string of letters that you gave it has um, you know is in any may in any way meaningful okay so later you'll realize that you actually have to specify this now um, the, if you look at this code uh, you know I just said let's print my sequence so we know that what is whatever is being printed and then you specify uh, that it is actually an alphabet um, and this is this is important because again a, pro, uh, a program is not supposed to know what you're really trying to specify and uh, then you're supposed to then we say well my sequence complement is my sequence dot complement and it'll create the complement it'll create the complement of the sequence and this is really important because um, you know whenever you look at a DNA strand and you want the complement or you want the reverse or the reverse complement uh, that's what you're supposed to look at and I'm going to print so again my sequence dot complement is the complement of my sequence so we'll hit F5 or you know if we just run the program and we see what whatever we're trying and, and I'll, I'm going to keep this open because this is how it's supposed to be uh, you see that 1.66 is really my bio version uh, it's kind of a bit of a it's a it tells you what the version is um, I asked it to print this um, I asked it to print and my sequence complement it says bound sequence complement of sequence something alphabet now the reason it's not doing it is simply because just because we call something an alphabet does not mean that um, the program is in any way knows exactly what's going on it doesn't know what this particular sequence is if you had specified the sequence as a DNA or a protein sequence and you might actually be able to at least for a DNA sequence or an RNA sequence you'll actually be able to create the complement using this command it's almost like create a complement of my sequence and then you just name that my underscore sequence underscore complement that really doesn't mean anything it's just something for you to know that you know this is really the complement of the sequence in question okay uh, again we're going to look at 20 different codes uh, so I'm going to look at uh, code then that's something you guys can also do um, <clears throat> So again, import bio. Now you'll realize that it doesn't really tell you to import bio, but it says from bio. So for example, this the dot tells you from sequence in bio, import a sequence, that you're ready to really read a sequence. And this is when you begin to start specifying stuff. Remember in the previous case, it just said that it, it is some alphabet. Okay, let's look at that. It says, um, It says this is some alphabet. It really doesn't know what it is, so it doesn't know what to quite, quite do with it. But here we are actually going to specify something called as bio.alphabet, which means it says that now we have an alphabet soup coming from bio, but you want to s tell somebody that it is generic DNA. Okay, uh, this bio version, it's really not important. I'll just... Uh, I'll just comment that away because that was just something you know it's one of these things where you uh, build a program and then you kind of forget to delete uh, some of the some of the commands which um, uh, but uh, which are not very useful uh, at least in the context of what you're trying to do but you can look at this and you know again this is a good good way to know remember these are two underscores this is two underscores not a single underscore okay on both sides of version okay so you specify sequence you've given it the exact same sequence as we gave it before and again it actually tells you this sequence command is telling you that you can actually make some specifications that this is a generic dna and then i say print my sequence and i say um, print reverse 
Then I say print my sequence reverse. And remember, look at the syntax here, okay? Um, print my sequence complement. So it, it takes a complement of the sequence. This takes the reverse of the sequence. And this is asking to do the reverse complement, the reverse complement of the sequence. Okay, so let's hit uh, F5 and see what happens. Okay, so in this case, you see that reverse is um, reverse is not defined. Okay, reverse is not defined. So I'll just take that out and see whether that makes that makes it slightly better. So the sequence has no attribute, has no reverse attribute, which means this thing about sequence dot reverse, it really does not do a reverse. Okay, there are other ways in which you can, um, other ways in which you can reverse something. So let's just, let's just take that away, comment that out. And now you'll see that um, it does not do, it does not do reverse. Okay, and this was a good illustration of what doesn't, uh, what BioPython cannot do. Um, so here's um, here's a classic example of um, of what it really can and cannot do. So if you say A C T A C A C T G G T, and you say let's take the complement, okay, in which case it creates the complement A for T, G for C, etc. And then it does it does do the reverse complement. So it does do a reverse complement, and if you do a reverse complement. What it does is it basically reverses the complement. So it does do reverse complement. It doesn't do reverse. Okay. Now for reverse, you could typically use a um, uh, for reverse, you could typically use uh, any kind of um, any kind of uh, you know without specifying the DNA sequence. You can actually just do reverse by treating it as some sort of a string. Okay, and that does not really have to come under the purview of BioPython. Okay, let me, um, so anyway, that's that's that. And I kind of uh, uh, deliberately kept things in and out so you could actually see the errors as they, as they arise. Let's look at um, the 4.3. Um, now, what do you see here? Um, and again, what do you see when you see these dots? Um, when you see these dots, uh, it, it really is, is kind of part of a command, okay? And again, um, you know, it's, it's, as I said, it's annoying. Uh, it's hard to remember what you're supposed to import. Um, you know, I, I, the example we have is import re for regular expressions, uh, import math, for example. Those are the things that, that we've, we've known, we know of. So import bio. Uh, let's uh, let's let me comment out import bio, and you you see that the programs is not particularly is not running, so we have to leave that in there. So import bio import bio tells you so here's basically the problem. You whenever you create um, whenever you create some of this uh, of, of of a code, and you know you're doing something, and then you say, well, I'm going to import math. And then you say, I'm going to import re for regular expressions. And you can say, well, somewhere along the line, I now in addition to all the stuff that I'm doing, I want to actually do some BioPython related things. That's when you're going to import bio. And then from bio.sequence, you're going to import a sequence. And then bio alphabet, you're importing generic DNA. And then the version and my sequence is the same. You're still looking at the exact same thing in the exact same way. You're asking to print my sequence. And now what you want is you want to transcribe your sequence, okay? And because the transcription process results in the mRNA, you, you call it my RNA and you print mRNA. Now, so remember, if you want to transcribe, it's the, to the sequence string, to the, to the name of the sequence, you can add a transcribe. Notice these, uh, notice the open and close parentheses. Um, and if you, then you can, it, it, additionally, you can also just print something directly. So for example, back transcribe it. We'll send it back from RNA back to DNA. Um, you can then to this back transcribe, you can add a complement. 
and then you can add a reverse complement. So this is uh, this is uh, so let's let's see this this is an operation, and I think this is actually quite useful, uh, especially if you have you know these gigantic sequences, if you have huge sequences, you know something of the order of a cosmid, um, and uh, you can't really do this. You want to transcribe it, you know, even if nothing else. Uh, merely as an exercise, that's one of th one of the things that you can do. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it, and you see everything as it is run. So for example, this is my original sequence, and then it transcribed. So all it did was it left everything the same. It just went from the thymidine to the uracil, and then what was the next thing? The next thing then it back transcribed, which means it sent it back to what it was supposed to do. And then, um, so rather than go back to sequence complement, it says my RNA back transcribe. So, you know, so now you, your RNA back dot transcribe is the same as your original sequence. So you can do a complement and a reverse complement. Notice the, notice the format. And that sends you back to, uh, you know, these two parts are parts of what were the previous code. Okay, so remember the dot transcribe uh, the back transcribe, the complement, and the reverse complement. Um, those are, I, in my opinion, very useful things, very useful things to know. Okay, let's look at the fourth code. Okay, now, um, this part again, you're importing bio uh, from bio.sequence, you're importing sequence. From bio.alphabet, you're importing, importing generic RNA. Once again, remember why we are importing alphabet, because we say, we're telling the program, we know something's going on, we know it's alphabet, but you know, it. this alphabet is not just some string. Remember, this is what you look at, what, what the human looks at versus what the computer recognizes, or whatever the, whatever Python recognizes are two completely different things, okay? And so uh, you're, uh, you're uh, importing, but you're importing generic RNA this time. Okay, so you go messenger RNA, and you have a sequence, and notice something that we have all the Ts are actually uracils, and you actually specify this as generic RNA. And now what you say, because you have it as an mRNA format, this is your F messenger RNA, dot translate will translate for you. Okay, so this is, uh, again, this is really cool. Um, you look at every one of these and you say, but I know how to do this if, for example, I was writing this in uh, regular Python. Yeah, you absolutely know how to do it. But it's so much nicer where you don't have to, you know, for example, if I specify that, I would have to say, okay, AUG is my, is methionine, for example. And I would have to specify the generic I would have to specify the generic code. But here what happens is because, you know, you don't really care about the generic code, you, uh, sorry, the genetic code, you don't have to save it separately. Um, all you call it is translate. But because you're doing it within the sphere of BioPython, you can just do it, okay? So it's very, very useful, irrespective of whether you guys go on to write, uh, you know, write programs for a living or something. This is a really useful thing to do, so keep this at the back of your mind. Okay, I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to look at this, and what you see here is, you know, this is obviously methionine, and it's it's translated it well, and it found two uh, it found two stop codons. For example, UAG is a stop codon, and something here is a stop codon, and it uh, as a as a default. It uh, replaced the the with the stop codons, you know, whenever one existed, with a um, with an asterisk. So this is obviously very useful, right? So you've learned how to transcribe. You know how to back transcribe. You can you can do a complement. You can do a reverse complement, and now you can even translate. So again, um, as you see these programs operate, you know, do open your own codes that were attached, and you can you can uh, use it too. Okay, what do we see here? I am importing from bio, a bio dot sequence import sequence bio alphabet. I'm importing generic RNA, 
and I call something coding DNA. I can't remember whether this coding DNA was used. Uh, it doesn't matter. Again, like I said, you can call it um, you can call it uh, meatballs. Okay, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to call it DNA, but again, it's always good practice for you to look at your code and say, well, okay, at least I know what each of these things really meant. So I've got this big sequence going and I'm going to translate it, okay? Uh, coding DNA translate, and I'm gonna translate to stop, which means it's a stop codon, it's true. So let's see, let's see what it does. Okay, now, <clears throat> what it'll do is, if you take a DNA sequence and translate it directly, it's going to go through the steps of the RNA without you having to specify anything about the RNA. Okay, and then it says translate, but no notice something that here you just left it as is, but you can actually put all kinds of things in the parentheses, all kinds of, um, all kinds of conditions and um, nothing is obviously the default and to stop equals true says that stop when you come to the first stop codon okay so if you really wanted to look a, uh, if you really wanted to look at an open reading frame you would um, you would actually um, look at the open reading frame and then just say okay stop because anything beyond uh, beyond this I'm not really particularly interested Okay, so for example, if you had a translate, um, there's all kinds of options that you can put into the parentheses. Um, the default is nothing, and all it'll do is it'll just directly translate. It doesn't care whether it finds the stop code on uh, or not. Okay, but if you specify, it'll stop the moment you find the stop code on. All right, let's look at the sixth code. It's not, not that many, but it'll, uh, it'll tell you there's something, some things that are pretty useful here. Um, let's look at the exact same thing. Import bio, bio sequence, import sequence, and again from bio.alphabet, we are looking at, so it says whenever you see these alphabets, it's generic data, and we just saw this, so you wanted to translate, then we do the exact same thing, it looks at the stop, true, and the coding DNA translate table equals two, to stop equals two. So you, here's another, here's another command that you can insert. So no command. This says stop when it comes to the first stop codon, and then it says take this from table two. And I think table two has something to do with mitochondrial DNA, where uh, the stop codons, the stop codons are slightly different. Okay, but let's see. Let's run this. See what happens. So. We see the stop codons, which are standard. Here it stops at the stop codon, and then here it looks at, and this is a mitochondrial, mitochondrial DNA, where the stop codons are slightly different. And for example, whatever represents the stop codon here is actually a representation of, um, of W, which is tryptophan. Okay, and then, the, then this is a proper stop codon. So this is a mitochondrial DNA, and there's a certain table which you can use. Um, so you'll see here that uh, this is a vertebrate mitochondrial DNA, mitochondrial DNA genetic code. It's slightly different from the regular genetic code. Okay, so you can. Um, uh, this is the table that they're. This is the table that they're talking about. Okay, so that, that tells you there's, there's different kinds of options. So let's look at the seventh code here. Um, and now we, you know, we, we begin to uh, add the indents. Okay, um, uh, we begin to add the indents. So uh, import, and now this is how to read a FASTA file. Um, and you can actually look at a FASTA file. It knows how to process it. You could potentially write a code to do that too. Uh, a standard code without invoking BioPython, but I think here's um, here's uh, how you can do that. Now, uh, again, remember how I said that for every um, for every different thing that you need to get um, for every every everything you need to use, you have to remember what really module or sub module within within BioPython you need to um, access. 
So import bio from bio import seek io, which is sequence sequence input output. So for sequence record, and this is anything, sequence record in sequence io parse. Okay, so this is parse the sequence input output. And again, now we are indenting, right? And that's what we do in Python. And it says test one dot fast a, and this is that's that's the fast a file that I sent to you, and that this is a fast a that it tells it's trying to tell the program that this is fast a format formatted. So it says print the sequence record. This is so sequence record dot id. So this is the identifier. So th I suspect that this is anything that comes after the caret marks. Um, then print representing or reprint sequence record which is now we're looking at the sequence okay and then you can print the sequence record so let's run this okay so clearly this tells you it came from somewhere in the gen bank um, i probably downloaded this it tells you that this is the sequence Okay, it said this is a sequence. It tells it's a single letter alphabet. That's what the sequence is. It specifies it because we've not specified generic DNA, etc. And the length is 942. So this is really a cool way without having to write a specific fast A formatted parser to be able to do this. Now let's look at that. Let's look at that file. Um, and I'll just open it in Notepad, for example, or I like Notepad 2. Which is really excellent. Um, it's free to download. It's free to install. Everything is free. Um, it, um, if you start coding in Notepad, uh, it'll recognize Python codes, for example, um, coloring differently, Perl codes current coloring differently. Believe me, it's not Notepad, you know, so it's not like saying, oh, it's a slightly better version of Notepad. Absolutely not. Okay, this is this is magnificent. So, uh, so you ha actually have this, and it says find the records, and it found the record. It goes up to here, for example. It found the record wherever you see a pipe, the pipe mark, and then it, it just says, well, I'm not going to call this the ID for the simple reason that that's a description. Okay, the GI tells you that it came from GenBank, and it is not going to print the entire sequence. Um, and we'll, we'll play around with that in a second, and it tells you that's 942. Well, what if I, what if I took this away? The REPR thing, okay? Okay, so the REPR is just a representation. If you want the entire thing, um, to come in then then you just just write the entire thing okay and I'm going to rewrite that Okay, this is a representation of the sequence, not the entire sequence. Okay, so you, uh, this is what it is. Again, great fast A formatted, um, uh, great fast A formatted um, um, parser. Okay, and you have to say that sequence IO, you want parsing, you want fast A. This is the name of the file, test one dot fast A, and this is fast A. Okay. So let's delete that. And so now you know how to do this. Okay, now the next is the GenBank entry. Uh, we're doing the same thing bio from bio import seek io. Okay, and um, what you see here is uh, um, we're doing the same thing. You parse the io. And it's test1.gbk.gbk tells you it's a, some sort of a 
Well, it's really a gen bank entry. And when I say gen bank entry, it's really something you're looking at when you go to gen bank and look at the gen bank web page. Okay, so t let's take a look at this and I'll edit it with notepad again. And you again, like I said, this is your standard, this is the standard page. It's the same one for which I had, you know, it's your, you have your protein sequence, you have your DNA sequence. I've actually, um, I actually have had written computer programs we did, uh, which did what was called screen scraping. Okay, because um, this is typically what you would get in the web page and you know you would actually have to write a program which cleans all this out and it's very painful so if you have um, if you have a auto parser like like so you can actually parse this okay so what are we looking at it says this is a genbank formatted entry this is i call it gbk and you need to call this gbk and i say print the record id which will probably be this um, and it says same thing, representation of sequence record dot sequence and the length. Okay, so let's see exactly what it does. And it found the exact same thing. Now it says it's ambiguous, ambiguous DNA. Now I can't remember exactly off the top of my head how I should be able to get uh, the protein sequence, but I'm sure there's a way in which you can do it, it's the same thing. It's so it, it, it just actually cal cal determined it from here. Um, it says GenBank, that's the accession ID uh, version one. Uh, so the version zero, that is that is nothing, and then, then you have version one. Okay, so again, uh, you can look at the dot ID, will take the entire record that you have specified and give the ID and the sequence and the sequence record. Okay, um, I cannot remember how to do protein, but uh, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out if necessary. So let me remove that and let's go look at something else. Now, let's say again we're importing bio and I'm importing sequence from sequence and from bio alphabet I'm invoking the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, you know, this is what was used to uh, determine nomenclature, especially for um, what we have here is biosequence, import sequence. Um, from my sequence, now we have a new sequence, and this is how we do it, and it says IUPAC unambiguous DNA. We don't really know. Uh, it just says as uh, the IUPAC recognize that this is a DNA sequence and I go my sequence goes from 4 to 12 which is 0 1 2 3 up to 11 and we've seen that and print my sequence from 4 to 12 okay um, I don't have to specify this I don't think but let's see what happens um, that basically says you know sequence goes from so just just take a piece of it Okay, and that's G A T G G G C C. So that's zero, one, two, three, four. So we're going from four to eleven. Okay, and that's basically what it is. Um, I asked it to specify that, but I don't think I need to specify it. You don't have to specify it. You can you can just print it directly. So again, here if you have a sequence and you want to print a piece of it or you know several pieces of it, um, then you can uh, specify kind of nucleotide number to nucleotide number. Okay, so this would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, because remember it doesn't do the last. That's something we realized when we looked at Python at the beginning. Okay, let's look at the tenth code here. Now this is again uh, very interesting. Let's say for example we went import bio from bio sequence sequence IUPAC un unambiguous DNA in the sense that it's saying well it's some DNA we don't let's not worry about it too much. In a sense what it's trying to say is treat it like a string. Okay so and it says my sequence is that print my sequence that means from um, residue 5 to 11 
of my sequence and then it says print zero zero um, two colons three that is it prints the first nucleotide of each codon so it'll take each codon so in this case I'm assuming it'll print G of ATG then C then T then G etc and I think this is actually print the first codon position and the second codon position so that's 0 to 3 from my sequence, 1 to 3, and 2 to 3. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, it's printing 4 to 12. And so here what it's doing is it's printing the first letter of every codon. G, C, T, G, T, A, A, G, wherever it, wherever it stops. This prints the first codon position, so that's A, and then the, it's almost like the middle of each codon. Okay, and this is again very useful. So at some point, if we needed to do a, um, a presentation where we looked at each of these codons and then you know just converted it into text, into um, um, kind of play around with these uh, letters, and uh, you know then following it, follow it with a translation. Or we can say, let's uh, rewrite all of this as a um, nucleotide frame shift. So we can always sh shift the frame. Okay, uh, and that's basically the code for this. And this basically is just T, A, G, etc. Okay, that's the, uh, the, the third position, which is the second codon position. Now, <clears throat> you look at each of these sequences as a, um, you look at each of these sequences as you understanding it to be DNA. But let's say you want to do other things to it, that, you know, it, now it ceases to remain, it ceases to remain a, um, um, a DNA and you want to manipulate you want to manipulate the sequence in ways that BioPython doesn't allow you, what you want to do is you want to then take away that DNA designation for it and just call it a string. And this is something you've seen. So we'll see what happens. And again, it just rewrites in the, in the context of, um, in the context of this, it doesn't really do much um, uh, because it's just kind of re rewriting it. But now, what if I did, um, I'm just going to try something. You say my, I'm just writing my sequence. String. And then you say print It doesn't like this. Um, it doesn't like the reverse, uh, obviously. But um, so here, for example, is we. I try to do the reverse, but it wouldn't reverse. But here is the reverse of something, right? Two colons and a negative one basically reads the string in the opposite direction, and I just call that string of my sequence. That okay? That that I now converted into a string and I wanted to reverse it. So here's one way. And uh, that's one way in which you can uh, do reverse. Remember, we um, earlier we realized that we couldn't really reverse these strings. So now um, let's go on to the twelfth one.
So here's another way in which you can do this. Remember, in, uh, in Python, everything is case sensitive. So you have to be very, very careful how you make your assignments. Um, so for example, here you have, again, bioalphabet, generic DNA. I don't think I need to specify any of this anymore. Uh, DNA sequence, sequence ACQT is a generic DNA. I want to, if I want to print it in uppercase, and again, this is default. There's probably commands that you can put in here. So you take the DNA sequence and you put it in uppercase. So this, all of this will be in uppercase. The ACGT will be uppercase. And then you can rewrite it as lowercase and it'll show up as lowercase. And this is very important because, um, uh, as you can see, uppercase and lowercase. Again, it's kind of the point of uh, what you need to do. You don't really have to worry about um, anything else. The, this is very important because um, remember when something is treated as a string, uh, treated as a DNA, um, it's completely different if it's uppercase versus lowercase. Yes, the biology doesn't care about it, but certainly the program does. And one of the things that you want to do is, you know, depending upon, let's say you're downloading something from a web page and you want to make sure that uh, you download it, it's effective, it's not a problem. On the other hand, you also want to make sure that um, that uh, it's it kind of, you know, from a format specific, it's what something you, you want to look at. And so if it's uppercase and you want to make it lowercase, you know what to do and also vice versa. Okay. And again, we looked at this, and for example, you have a sequence, you call it a sequence, unambiguous DNA, and you print my sequence, and that basically reverses it. As a sequence, uh, you don't necessarily have to convert it into, uh, you don't have to necessarily convert it into a string. So that's the command to do that. Now, in terms of uh, whether two sequences are equal, let's say you want to you have two gigantic. Now you know this is a this is a very small example, ACGT ACGT, very small, right? Which is great. You can just inspect it and you can say, okay, well this uh, this looks pretty good. But um, it's not the same, obviously, when you're looking at you know the example, the FASTA example that I had, where you had 500 different sequences. Um, uh, in nine, sorry, it was 942, but it could be a lot larger. And if you want to compare the two, this is a double equal to sign. And so you say, um, and now this is a this is an argument. You're making an argument here. So there's sequence one. It all ambig unambiguous DNA doesn't care. Unambiguous DNA doesn't it doesn't care. Um, and you say, um, I have two sequences. Print with a sequence one equals sequence two, and print with a sequence one equals sequence one. So obviously this is going to be, now remember this is an argument, so it's going to be true or false. I suspect the first one's going to be true because they are both equal, and the second one is going to be true because you know everything is equal to itself. It's a property of reflexivity. So let's run this, and you see it's true, it's true. Now if I change this, then you expect ATGT, then you expect the first one to be false because sequence one is no longer similar to equal to sequence two. And again, this is a nice way to actually compare two very large sequences and it'll do a lot of the work for you. And the first one obviously is false. Okay, so comparing sequences is also is also doable. Um, now let's look at something a little different. Uh, we've looked at generic DNA, and if you want to kind of specify your bio dot alphabet that you now have a generic protein, then you can specify that too, right? So um, you have a DNA sequence. And you know what that sequence is. Remember to specify this sequence that tells the protein that you're, excuse me, the program that you're looking at a sequence. So you have ACGT, which is adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. thymine. And here you have um, alanine, cysteine, glycine, and 
I completely forgot what it's supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> so in any case, um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here. Now the question is, DNA equals protein sequence. Are they equal, right? It's warning. Now this is kind of the point of the warning. So the point of the warning is Yes, they might look the same, right? But it's you're trying to make an argument here, and it says it's inconf it's incompatible. So again, this is one of the reasons why you can specify something as a generic DNA or a generic protein. Uh, let's see if we print this com argument. So it says it's true in the sense that they are the same, but it's, it's, it's not an error so much as it's a warning, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay, now let's look at um, mutable sequence. Okay, this is unambiguous DNA and to see whether mutations and you can actually make a mutation in whatever place so here's your mutable sequence and then you print the mutable sequence now you have to because it's now it's not just sequence it's a mutable sequence which means you're going to potentially do something to it okay um so mutable sequence then it says mutable sequence Five, so zero, one, two, three, four. You'll convert this, you can change this to C, and then you can also remove, you can also remove the T's and print the mutable sequence, and then see if you can print a reverse. Okay, so what happened? What happened here? So that's the original sequence. Then you look at, you said you want the fifth one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it went from a T to a C. So you change this to a C. That means you can now mutate, if you can call something a mutable sequence. And then you remove, you remove the T. You remove the T at that point of mutation. Okay? So you don't remove all the T's, obviously, because you see the T's are there. But here's the point you replace that with C, and you removed one T, and then you do a reverse. So a sequence cannot be reversed, obviously, but a mutable sequence, a mutable sequence can be reversed. Okay, you can see this is GCCA, GCCA. So dot reverse will reverse it. All right, now let's take a look at this. So from bio sequence, import <coughs> unknown sequence. From bio alphabet, import IUPAC. Now what's your unknown sequence? Your unknown UNK DNA is an unknown sequence, length 20, and this is un unambiguous, this is ambiguous data, and print unknown DNA, and then print unknown DNA is unknown sequence 20, alphabet IUPAC ambiguous DNA character equals R. Now, well, what is the point of what we're trying to do here? You notice that in some cases um, you'll have a, you know, kind of a DNA region or a protein region and you'll have, you know there's supposed to be an, a nucleotide or a series of nucleotides or a protein or amino acids, but they're unknown. So typically what is used? You typically use N, right? And so it just says there's an unknown region. And this is, you might say, well, is this important? Well, yeah, it is because you're really handling you're really handling sequence data. And so you say unknown DNA, print unknown DNA, and let's run this. 
And so typically remember the generic of an unknown region and this is 20 amino 20 nucleotides long. It's uh, you call it N, you know, so you specify something. It's 20 lengths long. You don't know what it's called. N. On the other hand, if you wanted to specify something as something else, then you have to actually add. So again, all kinds of interesting options for but you have to specify that it's an unknown sequence. So you're importing unknown sequence. So the program knows. And again, I, I hope as you look at this, you begin to get an appreciation for um, for the fact that uh, this is this is not none of this is actually easy. You know, I remember a, a computer program doesn't know or care about you know, program computer program doesn't know or care for it. It's just it, that's just bytes, bits and bytes, right? So all these specifications have to be put in place. Uh, that you're now going to deal with a mutable sequence. A regular sequence cannot be reversed, but a mutable sequence can be reversed. You're now dealing with an unknown sequence. So you're, you're dealing with a sequence and it's, it's generic DNA, or you're dealing with a sequence, it's gener generic protein, and you try to equate the two. The program has to say, okay, it's important to the biologist not to combine, not to combine and confuse, um, you know, adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine uh, with um, alanine, cysteine, glycine, etc. Okay, so this is it's very important to understand this biopython. Okay, we have about three to go. Now let's take a look at this. So we have the same thing, unknown sequence, ambiguous DNA, and you print the unknown DNA, and you know that's going to be 20 ends. Um, unknown DNA, the complement, let's find, okay, so you take the unknown DNA and get a complement of it, which is also going to be the exact same thing because it's going to be meaningless. And then you have the reverse complement, and again, you. so what you're doing is you're modifying this. Reverse complement, com complement, and then you're actually taking this unknown DNA and transcribing it. Um, now you have an unknown protein, um, which you which is a result of a translation of the unknown DNA. Okay, and then you print the unknown protein, and then you print the length of the unknown protein. Okay, so let's see. A lot of seems a lot confusing, but let's see how all the things that it does. Well, the first thing that we did was we said it's got 20 amino uh, nucleotide sequences and 20 of those, well, it's unknown, so we call it N. Uh, you reversed, you did a complement of it, or a complement of an unknown is an unknown. A reverse complement is also an unknown complement of an unknown complement. And then you say now typically unknown amino acids are not represented by N, unknown amino acids are represented by X. So you're going to have six of those. You can't have the seventh because there's no 21st N. And it says, you know, I'm printing this twice for some reason. Let me delete that. And you have, you print the length, which is the length of this protein is six. Again, like I said, uh, you might say, say, what is the point of any of this? Well, it is actually, it does make a lot of sense because, you know, um, as part of your program, uh, imagine, imagine you doing a blast search and you do a blast search and you get the blast results and you kind of you know look at it in depth and then this is one of your matches or something that's not a very good match but it's kind of a distant match you say okay this happens to be a protein of interest and you look at it and you say i want to write a program which processes this and you say oh there's so many unknowns and then you say i want to con i want to transcribe it which doesn't really make a difference to to this particular area but you might actually have um, you know, known DNA, known nucleotide regions, and known nucleotide regions um, um, on the on the five prime or the three prime end of it, and then you might you might have you know this from the N terminus or the C terminus you might have known amino acids, but you want to find a way to process the amino acids that you don't know, and all of this is actually well thought of because it's part of what you're looking at. Okay, two more to go. All right, now let's look at this um, bio. Now, for example, you can actually specify all these reverse complement, transcribe, back transcribe, translate 
are all modules which can also be directly invoked. So you have a certain string, it's a DNA, you don't, so in this case, you don't have to specify that you're coming up with a generic DNA, okay? And then, then because you don't have to specify the alphabet for the simple reason that you have all of this already in place and you say I want to press a reverse complement and then I want to transcribe my string and I want to back transcribe it and I want to translate it. Okay, so you can see that you can do all of this stuff. Um, you can do all of this stuff without having to get the, um, specify the alphabet component of this. Okay, so reverse complement, reverse complement will, um, uh, it's not just a complement, it's a reverse complement. So you will take a complement and you will reverse it. And then you transcribe it to its mRNA form. And then you back transcribe it to its uh, DNA. And then you can, you know, again, like I said, uh, this, is, this is kind of an exercise. You don't have to necessarily do, um, you know, in a typical ex experiment, you won't be able to do it. Just the fact that, that you can. Uh, let's look at the last one. So uh, now this is a, we looked at uh, processing of the fast A file. You looked at the processing of the fast Q file of, um, of a GenBank, a .gbk file. Now we're going to look at the processing of a fast Q file. Okay, so sequence IO, because again, you're reading something and you're going to write to something. So for sequence record, again, you can just call this an elephant, doesn't really matter. Parse, that, that's going to be a FASTQ file, and that's going to be the format. It says print the length of the sequence, okay? It knows what the sequence record is. Um, then it says print the sequence record sequence. Then print the sequence record letter annotations, which is the FRED quality. Now you can also say sequence record 20 from the left hand side, okay, so that you just call that the left, that's 20 from the left hand side, and left dot sequence, so the sequence of the left, so you specify the left, and then left letter annotations, fret quality, or you can go from the right, 21 to towards the end of that, and you say, you call that right, so you say the sequence of the right is what you want to print and the letter annotation. And one of the things you can do is you can add the left and the right, kind of bring it back, concatenate the pieces together, print it, bring the length of complete, and do the letter annotations. Now, uh, let's look at my FASTQ file, and I'm going to edit it too. So for example, the left would be from this side, the right would be from this side, and it'll tell you what the annotations are, and you'll get some sort of a quality score, okay? Um, Okay, so just keep this file at the uh, keep this file at the back of your minds, and let's run this program. Okay, so we said let's print the length. So this record has this read has sixty nucleotides. Okay, then it says so that's the length. This is the record and then the FRED quality. So then the quality of each of these, each of the nucleotides in this read. Then you say, go from left, let's call it, this is a sequence record going from nothing to 20. We could call it zero to 20, okay? Question is, we don't know. We just worry about the first 20, so we're not terribly concerned about it. So first 20, and then this tells you the FRED quality scores of that, each of those, of each of those nucleotides. Um, and then it says go, or you can go from 21 onwards, where you can go from 21 directly to 60, okay? Um, and it says, print the FRED scores. Then it's like left plus right. Okay, this is all the things about the FRED quality. And then the left plus right, it's saying complete. That's 59, and then it's giving you the scores. Okay, so again, you can process a FASTQ file for those of you who are um, 
into next generation sequencing. You could write, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are programs which actually do this automatically, but it's nice to know that uh, you could do something if you want to. And it's just a matter of, um, it's just a matter of putting this, um, you know, being able to process it. Now I'm sure there's all kinds of more interesting ways you can do to process a fast Q file. Uh, this is about as much as I had for the first day. Um, um, you know, by the by, I will send you more stuff, and we'll make uh, we'll make similar movies of this, and um, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, this this is on my personal channel on YouTube. Um, I guess feel free to look at other videos. Um, they're not educational, of course. They're family videos and things like that. Um, thank you very much.